This is prayer time. <laughs> May as well get in on it. Oh my God. How much you mean to me?
Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. And welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study live. Praise God. I trust that the Lord is blessing you and keeping you in a great, marvelous way. In a few minutes, we're going to get into some things that I believe will be a blessing to all those who will open their ears to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church. Praise God. That which we just heard was a part of something we just heard was ministering by inspiration of the Holy Ghost tongues and interpretation of tongues and even prophecy in song thinking back on it and listening to what was being said the Lord was given a word a word of encouragement for those of us who have had to say goodbye to somebody. Praise God. And it was a word of encouragement. Those that have gone on before us are in far better shape than we are. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Praise God. Never feel sorry for a believer that goes to be with the Lord. Never feel sorry for them. There's no need or reason to feel sorry for them. They're in better shape than you are. So there's nothing for them, for you or I to be a feeling sorry for. Let's stay with the word of God. You know, I didn't I didn't know I was going here. I didn't know this was going to even happen like this. But I want to say something, and then we're going to get into the we're going to pray and get into the word. I didn't know that song would play. But that was by direction of the Holy Ghost. Because I sent him saying something else to me. There's something else that God does not want. He does not want us to getting lost in grief. Getting in falling into a place of grief. And staying there. When that happens, it is easy to lose your desire to live yourself. And that is not the will of God. We've got work to do. And we need to say yes to the Lord about everything he has for us and wants to do for us. Be at peace. Be at peace. And don't let the enemy steal your joy. Amen. Some of you watching right now, the enemy is trying to steal your joy. It may not be over the death of a loved one. It could be some other thing, but he's, he's always trying to defeat us. But he doesn't have to win. We don't have to let him win. We can walk in victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to pray. And then we're going to get into some other things that the Lord has impressed upon me to talk about. Now, Father, we thank you again for your holy word. I want to thank you, first of all, for that which I was inspired to speak on, 
when I didn't know that it was coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Holy Ghost ministering to people. Thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And thank you again for that which you have for us today through the word, that which you have impressed upon my heart. In fact, weeks ago, you laid upon my heart that I should deal with this. And I thank you for the opportunity to obey that leading. I trust the Holy Ghost who you have sent to indwell us, to be our teacher and to be our guide, to lead us and guide us in all truth. I trust him to live big in me tonight, to think through my mind, speak through my lips, make my tongue as it were the pen of a ready writer, that I may speak as the oracles of God in the name of Jesus. Touch the hearts of those that are tuned in minister to them in a special way. Thank you for answers. People have questions, so many questions about so many things. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost giving answers. You know exactly what people need to hear tonight. And I thank you for ministering to every single one. Let there not be one person who is not ministered to by the Spirit of God tonight through your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Now if you have your Bibles, your devices, whatever it is, you lift them up and say with me, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me, to change me, and to be glorified through my life. Therefore, I set myself in agreement with His Word by having a receptive heart and a readiness of mind to receive. And by being a doer of the Word I hear and not a hearer only, I realize that obedience to God's word is essential in order to have God's best for my life. Amen. Some weeks ago, the Lord impressed upon my heart that I should talk about what I'm about to get into in just a few minutes. I'm going to be teaching you from my book, a book that I wrote a number of years ago called Sickness, Disease, and Premature Death in the Church. Why? There is a different cause for sickness and disease and premature death among unbelievers than there is in the church, the body of Christ. Amen. And I wrote this some time ago. I believe that this is a classic. I believe, in fact, in my, in my own personal opinion, this is the best and most informative book that I have written to this point. And to God be the glory. As someone who teaches faith and healing my heart's desire is to see God's people healed and in good health. However, this is not always possible. And this, I wrote this book to shed some light on why. Some of the things I said about this that you will learn is why the cause of sickness and disease is different for believers than unbelievers. Then the specific causes for sickness, disease, and premature death in the church. And then 
how and how to deal with the untimely death of a loved one and, and much more. All of that is covered in this. Today, and I'm not going to get much in, I'll, I'll deal with this today, tonight, and the Lord say the same, I'll continue next week and, and get some more in. But this is not something I want to, I will not go through the whole book. Because, um, well, I don't, I'm, I don't need to do that. You can always order the book and, and read it for yourself. But I would say to anybody, especially if you are in our church, you, if you don't have this book, you need it. If you got it and you read it, you need to reread it because you would have read it years ago. There is a side. Now, I've been teaching healing, really teaching healing, faith and healing, since around 1979, 79, 78, 79, somewhere there I started teaching about healing and faith. 79, 80, somewhere in there is when I started teaching about it. I already, I've always prayed for the sick in my services and when I was operating as an evangelist. Healing and prayer for the sick was always something that, that I did. I learned that uh, from my pastor. All of our churches really, I mean, prayer for the sick was always a part of what we did. Two things you can count on happening in our churches. There's going to be an altar call at the end of the message, and there's going to be a time for praying for the sick. We always believed in it. And I've been believing in healing since I was a child. Even as a little boy, I remember when going to church with my grandmother, some mornings, sometimes if I wasn't feeling well, I remember we had, were, the church we were in at the time, the pastor was, was named Elder Wallace. And I, and I would say, Grandma, my, I don't feel well. My, my stomach is bothering me, or whatever. And she would say, well, let Elder Wallace pray for you today. So I, I was taught way back then as a little child to trust God to heal by the laying on of hands. And I can remember like it was yesterday. Sometimes I'd get on that line, he would have a line of people. It was a old storefront church. So I only had one aisle. And he would line where he would call for people who wanted prayer. I'd make sure I joined God in there. And one at a time, he would pray for us. He would anoint anoint you with oil, he'd shake that oil over you. And I remember as a little boy, four years old, five years old, six years old, young boy. I would get in the line, he would anoint me, pour that oil over me, and then he would put his hands on me, and he would, now I realize today that he was probably speaking in tongues or something. I didn't understand what he was doing. Just sound like he was just making some funny noises. But I would walk away from there expecting whatever was bothering me to stop bothering me. And it did every time because I had childlike faith. And if you have childlike faith, it'll happen for you. If you just believe, expect it to happen. You know, we were children. If, we, if you fell and hurt yourself or something, sometimes you go home 
and start crying. Oh, I'm hurt, Mom, what's wrong? Oh, Mama, I, I fell, I, oh, come here, come here, baby. Let me kiss it, let me kiss it. Some of y'all remember things like that happening. And they would kiss it. And you want, you run away and go and finish playing. And you really felt better. How did that happen? Was there some kind of power in your mama's kiss? No. It was power in your believing. We were so convinced that if mama kissed it, it's going to be all right. Because she just said, let me kiss it. And you just felt right then, if she do, it's going to be fine. And it, and it worked like that every time. That's childlike faith. We need to have that kind of faith today in the Word of God. And I'm here to tell you, if you believe, if you are convinced, I just don't mean in your head, convinced in your heart that healing is yours, if you're prayed for or if you pray yourself, Whatever the case is, that moment, you must believe. I mean, be thoroughly convinced that the death blow was dealt to that condition. I don't care what it's called, how long it's been there, what the doctors have said about it or anything. You must believe that the death blow was dealt to that condition. In the name of Jesus. And you've got to be thoroughly convinced. And you've got to stay that way. And not be moved by how you look. Not by, be moved by how you feel. Not be, looked, um, not be moved by how, how, what the reports are saying. Stay convinced. That thing is dead. Call it dead. Every time you think about it, you say it is dead. It is dead in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord, that that thing is dead. When you get like that and believe like that, I'm telling you that thing can't stay there. You got to have the kind of faith Jesus expressed or demonstrated when he spoke to that fig tree. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree and said, no fruit grow on you, henceforth forever, he walked away. The tree didn't look any different that moment. It died, though. But where did it die? It died at the root. But you couldn't see the root because the root was underground. But it died then. And they went on where they were going. And they came back by the next day. And Peter noticed that the tree was all withered. Now it looked withered. Now it looked dead. And Peter called it to Jesus' attention and said, look, the, cur the, the, the uh, tree that you cursed is withered. Jesus said, if you have faith, and doubt not. You'll not only do that which was done to the fig tree, but if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say will come to pass, you'll have whatever you say. At what time are we going to believe what Jesus said? When are we going to come to the place that we believe the Bible above our experience. At what time are we going to believe what he said above what the doctor said? At what point are we going to believe what he said above what the medical report said? At what point are we going to believe what he said above how we feel, how we look? We gotta believe that thing is dead. Thank you, Lord. Every time you think about it, give him praise because it's dead.
It is dead. You know, I remember years ago, the Lord, when I st first started learning about faith and, and those things that I teach today, the Lord spoke to me once, many years ago. He said, I'm going to teach you something about faith. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Whenever you are believing me for something, you must see through the eyes of faith. I'd never heard that expression in my life, but that's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Whenever you are believing me for something, you must see through the eyes of faith yourself having that thing. And then you must begin to rejoice in the same manner that you would rejoice if you actually had it in your hand. Now to me, that, that was some powerful revelation. I learned something. If you're believing God for something, you're truly believing. I'm not talking about wishing you get it. I mean, believe that you got it. Believe it. When you pray, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. What should you do when you pray? Believe. What should you believe? Believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. I've been saying some of these things recently. But it's still true. Believe that you take it. And you shall have it. You're not going to have it until after you convince you already got it. You got to be convinced you got it. And then it'll show up. Let me say it this way. Believe you got it. And eventually you will see it. And I said it that way for a purpose. Because a lot of people get taught, caught up. And, well, it's taking a long, why is it taking so long? Why are you shaking over how long it's taking? Why are you not steadfast? Be ye steadfast, unmovable. See, abounding. Let me say it this way, in the word of the Lord. Standing. Convince, not letting anything or anyone shake your faith. Not letting anything or anyone. Feelings, emotions, physical feelings, or any other thing. Not letting it shake what you believe. Get away from people and stop discussing what you're dealing with, with other people. Sometimes that's the worst thing you can do, especially with doubt peddlers and fear spreaders and those that don't believe in healing. I know there are those who say they believe in healing, but they don't believe it's always God's will to heal. Those are not the people that you need to be talking to when you need healing. Because those are the kind of people that will ask you questions to peddle doubt. Well, if, if you say you believe, how come this is still happening? Why is this not happening? Why don't you see any change? When you get over into the arena of thought, you're going to be defeated. You got to stay in the arena of faith. The enemy cannot defeat you as long as you're in faith. Thank you, Lord, for that. Didn't know I was going to say this tonight, but thank God for it. As long as you stay in the arena of faith, I don't care what's happening. I told somebody some years ago, as long as you're fighting, you're winning. When you quit, when you give up, that's when it's over. Over the years, I prayed for I don't know how many people over the years. I have never had a case in my life where I was ministering to a sick person who said to me, 
I'm tired. I've never had seen one of those people live. You can't afford to get tired. Every person that have ever said to me, when I was standing with them, now this is what you got to believe. I'm, I'm on them. Let's go. Let's say what the word says. Say with what the word says. Come on, confess the word. Say the word. There has never been a case where a person told me that they were tired. That one. You can't afford to get tired. Tired? What does that mean? You can't afford to get tired. I'm tired of I'm tired of listening to the tapes. I'm tired of confessing. I don't see no change. I'm tired. Your focus is in the wrong place. You're focusing on whether you see a change. That is not the indicator that something is happening. The indicator is what God said. What did he say? You think Jesus, when he spoke to that tree, and walked away, kept looking back to see if anything changed. He went on about his business. In fact, when he came back by the next day, he didn't even go toward that tree. You have to believe what the word said and stay convinced. Thank you, Lord. Stay convinced. Are you listening to me? Stay convinced. Get away from anything. Now hear me good. Get away from anything and anyone that causes you to doubt. Stay away from anything and anyone that causes you to doubt. Be careful what you read, what you listen to. Even what you watch on TV. You're suffering with something. You don't need to be watching these hospital shows. You know, where, where these, they may be entertaining, but they, they don't give you hope. Everybody's suffering. There's always some emergency and the person dies or something. You don't need to be Get that mess in you. You need to be watching something else. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It would be better to watch cartoons than watch some of these things. I'm not encouraging you to watch cartoons necessarily, but you understand what I mean. That, that would be better than sitting watching these dramas that steal hope. That cause your mind to go a certain place. Amen. I'm, I'm going this direction because I can sensing the Lord moving me this way and prompting me to say some of these things to you. Because people are going through things sometimes. And sometimes people lose because they don't know how to stand. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to stand steady in what they believe. They don't know how to stand steady. You know, a few years ago, when COVID came out back in 2020, and it was real strong back then. I would talk to people sometime. And I've had somebody tell, talk, talk to me about how afraid they were. I said, stop listening. Stop turning on the news every day, listening to reports about how many, how many more people died and this happened and the numbers are going up and all of this kind of stuff. You're going to sit down and feed yourself that garbage and then wonder why you're afraid. 
You're going to sit down and listen to that. Listen, there's a saying, you are what you eat. You've heard that saying before? You are what you eat. Think about that in this way, because you're sitting down eating all this negativity. And you think it's not going to have an effect on you? I know there's going to be people that say, you're just denying reality. Well, that's not my reality. My reality is what the Word of God said. So I'm not denying reality. I'm denying this thing to have a right in me. I'm denying it a right in me. You just won't face you just may as well look at, you just may as well, no, I don't may as, I may as well let you go. If I was talking to somebody on the telephone and I was believing God for something, they talking doubt and all that, I might be courteous enough to say I got to go. I might be that courteous. I got to go. By the grace of God, I'll be that courteous. Maybe. You don't sound like you. You're really in faith about being courteous. Courteous. I'm not. Because I don't think that I would necessarily be that courteous. Especially my life is dependent. This, my li this is a battle for my life. Battle for my health. I don't have time to talk to people like that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Watch what you read. Watch who you listening to. Watch what you get involved with on the internet, on social media. Be careful of the things that you get involved in. Does it add to you or does it take away from you? You ever have a talk with someone, and when you finish talking to them, you feel bad? You ever talk to somebody, you wasn't feeling all that great at first, and by the time you finished with them, you felt worse? You got to be careful. That's in your hands. Yeah, but that's my good friend. Doesn't matter. Let me ask you what's let me ask you something. What's more important? That staying your quote unquote good friend or you being healed? What's more important? You concerned about the feelings of your good friend or you living? Or you I mean or you dying? What if what if what if Stay with this individual and just trying to be so whatever with this individual. I won't speak the truth. And I just let them say any and everything to me. And I don't correct it. Because I, I, I need their friendship. I don't need anybody's friendship like that. No one. I don't need anybody's friendship like that. You start talking poison, that's where I'm going to cut it off because I don't need to hear that. But I don't get into talking to people about things I deal with anyway. That's another mistake I think we make. Always running to somebody else, telling them what's going on with you and what you're suffering with. How's that helping you? Why don't you talk to the Lord about it? Matter of fact, why don't you speak to the thing? Speak to your mountain. Don't just talk to the Lord about your mountain. Speak to your mountain. At what point are you going to learn that you have authority over the enemy? At what point? When are you going to learn what the Bible says? That you have authority over the enemy. And at what point are you going to start exercising that authority? At what point are you going to say, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I command this pain 
pain you leave my body. When you gonna when you gonna start saying it? When you gonna stop crying? Oh God! Oh God! I'm in so much pain. Oh God! Just if you just do something about the pain, why don't you do something about it? What can I do? Exercise authority. Exercise authority. Amen. I'm not telling you something I don't do. I do these same things. Amen. I remember oh, probably a couple of months ago, it's happened more than one time. I was just sitting down doing something, I don't know what I, and then suddenly I just felt like I was, a headache was about to start. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I will not have any headaches in the mighty name of Jesus. That thing went right away. Why? Because I'm convinced. How can you do that? Because I've been raised up just like you. If you're a born-again believer, you've been raised up with Christ and made to sit with him in heavenly places, far above principality and power and dominion and might and everything that has a name. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can curse that thing coming against you, command it to die and to leave your body and call it dead. When the enemy come knocking at your door, he said, no, no. You will not come here. I will not have that. That doesn't happen. That doesn't work because I'm a minister. That don't just work for preachers. It'll work for you if you believe it. It'll work for you. I can sit here and give you all kinds of testimonies of how I exercise authority over the enemy. And I saw things change. Because I did. The devil is defeated. Do you hear me? Stop talking about how much power he got. The devil is defeated. You got more authority than he does. In fact, he has no authority over you as a believer. The Bible teaches that we have been delivered from the power, or that means the authority of darkness. Darkness is talking about the kingdom of Satan. Satan and his entire kingdom. We have been delivered from the power or the authority of Satan and his kingdom and have been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. That's, that's, that's the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of light. That's the kingdom we operate from. You have authority. You have authority over that thing coming against your body. You've got authority over that thing coming against your mind. You got authority over that thing keeping you from sleeping at night and resting at night. You got authority over that thing that's keeping you tossing and turning all through the night. You have authority over it. You have authority over that thing that keeps you going to the bathroom. You can't rest, you can't sleep up five, six, seven times a night going to the bathroom. You can't sleep. You have authority over that. By what do I have authority? How do you say I have a? I'm saying what the Word tells you. I'm telling you what the Word tells you. If you look at Ephesians chapter 2 and look at verse 6, you'll know that you've been raised up together with Christ. You don't have to be victimized by the devil. You don't have to be a victim. Stand around suffering all the time. Can't do this. Can't do that. No victory. No peace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's another one that, that, that the Lord just brought to me. The people People are they're disturbed. You have no peace. 
you have no rest. How can I have no peace and I have the Prince of Peace living on the inside of me? I have the Prince of Peace in me. And see, and so if the enemy is trying to take my peace from me, I speak. No, I am going to be at peace. So by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, an authority that I share, being raised up together with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places, in Christ, far above, far above, far above. Principalities and powers and all the demonic forces, everything the devil got to offer, he's under your feet. I see hear people say, the devil's riding my back. What do you, how he get up there? How he get up there? You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's your position. You are seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father. If the devil is riding your back, you're letting him ride your back. And you got to come down on his level to let him ride you back. I'm going to be at peace. I'm going to be full of joy. I'm going to have victory. I'm not going to let the devil bombard my mind with junk and thoughts and other things. I'm going to take authority. Sometimes you got to take authority. I keep hearing this thing. I keep having this thought come to my mind. It keep coming to me. It keeps saying to me, well, answer it. Answer the thought with the word of God. The devil told you, you're going to lie. You're going to die. You're going you're gonna to die. No, I will not die. I am going to live and declare the wonderful works of God. You are a liar. You are defeated. And you can't win. Devil, you don't have any power or authority to cause my death. You don't have the authority. And he ain't got no power. I trust my God and the Lord Jesus Christ to continually thwart and frustrate the purposes and plans of the enemy against my life, against my body. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will accomplish the purpose for which I was created. God brought me here with a purpose. I was born with a purpose. I will not die. I will not die until my purpose has been fulfilled. I will not. I refuse it. I, re I reject, renounce, resist, and stand against premature death in the mighty name and by the mighty blood of Jesus. Oh, I can sense it. I know I'm helping somebody. Somebody getting help right now. Learn to, you know, from the Word of God, confess some things. Make up some confessions on the basis of the Word. I do it every day. If I had it in front of me, I don't have it in front of me, I'd read some of it to you. Amen. I trust the Lord to keep my body healthy and strong. Hallelujah. I know what the Word of God says. I even speak to my body. I command my body to yield to the Word of God. Body, you will yield only to the Word. You will not Yield to sickness or disease or any symptom thereof. No sickness, no disease, and no symptoms associated with them has any right 
in my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and is a member of Christ. Praise God. I reject, renounce, resist, and stand against sickness, disease, and premature death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A devil will talk to you and he'll talk a hole in your head if you let him. And you bombarded with these thoughts, make it stop. How I make it stop? You got authority. Exercise your, I command you to stop and go from me right now and do not return. It is a lie. It is not going to be that way. You, have, you can have a pimple on your cheek and by the time the devil finishes talking to you, you'll see your whole funeral. You just had a pimple. The devil is that way. But you got to put your faith in God. I haven't even touched what I was going to get into. Because the Holy Ghost took me this way. But I'm, I'm, I'm going with him. I'm going with him. I'm yielded to him. God wants you well. God wants you well. I wouldn't sit in a church or any other thing and let them tell me God doesn't want me well. It may not be God's will. You're in trouble. If you sit and listen to that every week, you are in trouble. I may as well teach you since you showed up tonight. You're in trouble. Because let me tell you something. It's what you believe in your heart, according to the Word of God, is what you're going to have. It's what you believe in your heart, according to the Word. That's what you're going to have. Now, if I'm sitting somewhere and they're telling me, you know, it may not be God's will. It may not be the Lord's will. Sometime God, you know, the Lord said he'll have mercy on whom he will have mercy. He may not want to have mercy on you today. You can take all that and keep it. And if, when people take these scriptures and quote them to you, ask them to show you where it relates to healing. Show, show me where it says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy regarding healing. What we going to do with himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses? Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That's past tense. Well, how are you going to get he will if he have mercy. Where are you going to get that from? How do you get that out of that? What are you going to do with that scripture? What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? When are you going to start talking to your knees? When are you going to stop? When are you going to tell, stop? Pain, you stop right here. I'm going to be, I'm going to walk. Yes, I am. I'm going to walk. And I'm going to be pain free. You go from me. Now, now this is not using it, I mean, like, like a good luck charm or something. This is not eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This is not abracadabra. This is me exercising authority. How do you exercise authority? You've been raised above everything that has an every name that is named. Named. You you have you've been raised up above it with Jesus. Wherever Jesus was raised to, you were raised to the same spot. We are seated with Him. We share. We share His authority. 
whatever authority he has, you have, according to your Bible, according to your Bible, you have the same authority. When are you going to use it? What did Jesus say? Behold, in Luke 10, 19, I give unto you power. That means authority. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And that word power, talking about his inherent power. God have given you authority over the devil and over all the power of the devil. Anything he got. No matter what he, the fiery darts that he has thrown your way. You have authority of it, over it. And you got a shield. It's called the shield of faith. When he shoots those fiery missiles at you, you use the faith that God has given you to put it out. The devil is a liar and he is defeated. And sometimes you got to be reminded. He cannot win. He cannot win. Unless you let him win. Don't throw up your hands. Talk about you're tired. Oh Lord, I've been suffering a long time. Yes, he knows how long you've been suffering. But what have you been doing for a long time? Complaining? When have you started exercising your authority? Then, what are you expecting to happen? What do you expect to happen? What do you expect to happen? Several years ago, we was in, on the island of Tobago, in Trinidad and Tobago. And there was a young, a teenager. He was blind in one eye because through an accident, his eye was put out. When I ministered to him, laid hands on him and prayed for him so far, I told him to put his hand over the other eye, the good eye, if you will. I said, look around, tell me what you see. He said, he said I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Nothing changed. I said, now listen to me. I'm going to lay my hands on you again. This time, I want you to expect your eye to be healed. See, that's all he needed. We needed to change his expectation. He wasn't expecting it the first time. He was just there, to, you know, hoping for it. In a, in a sense, you know, kind of hoping and praying and praying and hoping. Wishing for it but not expecting it. Some people are afraid to believe and expect it to be done just the way they pray because they're uncertain about God's will. Now you hear me. I'm going to be closing in a few minutes, but you hear me and hear me good. If you are uncertain that God wants you to have what you're praying for, you're not ready to pray. Do not pray. You're not ready. You are not ready until you know that it is God's will for you to have it. He wants me to have it as much as I want it. When you come to that, it's easy to pray. When you come to that, it's easy to receive. When you learn this, you're going to be a champion in prayer. When you learn this, oh, you're going to see a complete change in your life. I don't ever pray anything and say, Lord, if it be thy will. I don't ever do that. Ever, ever, ever. If is the badge of doubt. I find out what his will is before I pray. How do you do that? By the word. So I need a car. So I'm going to pray for a car. I'm not going to say, Lord, if it, Lord, I need this car. If it be thy will. Oh, God, I pray that you bless me with this car. If it be thy will. Now, let me ask you a question. 
Can you believe that you receive it? You say, yes, no, you can't. It's impossible. Why can't you believe that you receive it? Because you're not sure that he wants you to have it. If you're not sure he wants you to have it, you can't believe you receive it. You got to believe you take it. You can't believe that you take it as mine right now. I pray with people. And they ask, oh, pray for me, pray with it about this. And then we pray in the eyes of that. And I do it purposely because I'm testing them. I say, all right, is it yours? And by faith it is. Well, I know that person ain't got it. They're not going to get it. They don't have it, and they're not going to get it. If you come and ask me to pray for something, pray with you about something, and I pray and I ask you, is it yours? And your answer is, by faith it is. That is a sure sign that you don't believe it. A sure sign that you don't believe it. Why you got to say, by faith it is? That's the only way you're going to get it, by faith. That's why I asked it, it's yours. Believe that you receive. Remember what 1 John 5 and 14 and 15 told us? This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, that's all I need to know. If we know that he heareth us, we know that we have. Not we know that we're going to get. We know we have it. I don't wait until I see it to know I got it. I got it even though I don't see it yet. I got it even though I don't feel it. I got it even though it has not come into contact with my physical senses. I got it because the word of God says I have it. So if you went, if you needed a car, well, what you going to say is, Lord, I thank you that your word says what things whoever I desire when I pray, believe I receive them and I shall have them. I desire this car. I need this car to get around or whatever may say I may say all of that. I may not even add all that in there. On the authority of your word. I ask that you bring, cause me to have, you know, that you give me this car or a car. That you give me what's needed that I may have this car. How's God going to answer that? None of my business. None of my business. He just told me to pray and believe. I'm going to tell you this one last thing. Turned out to be a different lesson than I had planned to talk about, but that's all right. It's good. It's needed. Years ago, I was needing, speaking about a car, I, I didn't, I was trying, I wanted to get this car. It wasn't a brand new car. And I wanted to get this car. And I, uh, you know, through the bank, I tried to, you know, put an application for the car. You know, for a loan to get the car. And they did some kind of way through, you know, through machine or something like that. In other words, through their computer system. And, um, and it turned me down. But I was believing God for a car, for this car. As a matter of fact, not just a car, I was believing God for this particular car I wanted. And so, what did I do when I got turned down? Well, first of all, I was told by someone, matter of fact, one of our members was working at the bank, and they told me, Pastor, you, you got uh, the computer turned you down, but the uh, branch manager is going to be, will be here, you know, tomorrow or the next day, whatever it is, and you can you know, apply again and, and, and get with them or whatever the case was. So I went to the Lord. 
I went to the Lord. Now my faith can't be in the manager, branch manager. It can't be in the computer. It's got to be in God. So I said, now Lord, here's what your word says. And I just quoted the scripture to him. And Jesus also said in John 16, I think in 23, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. That's what that might be 24. Verse 24. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, he says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that's what he said before that, he will give it you. And he said, verily, verily, I said, what things seven years shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So I went to the Father with everything, every scripture I knew. I turned to him, did what your word says. Now, Father, I said, now, Father, I thank you. I believe that I received this car in the name of Jesus. I don't know how you're going to do it. I said, now, Lord, and I think I needed, I forgot how much I needed at the time. so many thousands of dollars. But whatever the amount was, I called that amount to the Lord. I said, I don't care if that many people have to come by my house and you send them one at a time and they ring the bell and say, the Lord told me to give you a dollar. I don't care how you're going to do it. That's none of my business. This is what you said and this is what I believe. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. I remember this night I went to sleep. Thanking God for that car. Thanking him. Thanking him. Thanking him. For every time I thought about it. I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for that car. Oh, I'm so glad you did it. Oh, I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. I ain't seen a thing yet. I knew you were going to do it. Oh, I knew you were going to do it. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. I went to sleep praising God. And I was awakened by a phone call from this member that was, in, that was working in the bank. And when I said, hello, she said, Pastor, the Lord said, right. She said, now, you're going to get the official thing later. But before that, before I tell you that part, I went to sleep praising God, and I had a dream. And in the dream, I was sitting down talking to this, this person over the bank who I never met. And they were sitting on this side of the desk, and I was sitting on the other side, and they was talking to me, asking me some things. And I was talking to them about whatever they were saying. And they took a yellow legal pad, and they just started writing while I was talking. They're writing, writing, listening to me and writing. And they ripped the, the page off in my dream, handed it to me and said, go give this to whoever they told me to give it to and said, you've been approved. And the phone rang and woke me up from the dream. And what did they tell me? The Lord said, right. Your, your loan is approved. And she said, now, they're going to call you later and, and tell you, she said, I'm just giving you a heads up. You'll get the official thing from them later. I don't know if she was, I don't think she's supposed to tell me, but she told me anyway. And later on, I got that call. Mr. Holmes, you've been approved. Thank you very much. That car was mine before I went to sleep. I think I just helped somebody. It could be a car. It could be a job. It could be a place to live. It could be money for your rent. Look to God. Stop looking to people. Look to God. Stop figuring out for yourself how it's going to work. 
If you could do it, you don't need him. Look to the Lord. Praise God. If I was changing this message, I'd call it faith works. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we talked about believing God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for everything that has been said tonight. I asked you for utterance earlier. I asked that the Holy Ghost would think through my mind and speak through my lips. And oh, yes, you did. It's happened. And I thank you that I had the grace and the knowledge to flow with the Holy Ghost. I said to you that you knew exactly what people needed to hear. And you led me. Little did I know I was going that way. But I thank you. And I thank you for blessing every person that have been, that heard. I hear you. Thank you. Now the Lord has asked me to, to pray. I'm going to pray with you. Some of you have been, you have things before the Lord right now. Something you need from him. Might even be a car. Maybe a job. Maybe a raise. Maybe, I don't know what it is. But I want to, I want to agree with you. I want to join with you. And I want you to get in agreement. Because the word of God said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now, Father, on the basis and on the authority of your eternal word, which is true. For the scripture says, every word of God is true. Your word is true. I want to join with these, there are those, you know who they are. I don't even know who they are. I can't see them. You know who they are. Some are believing for a healing. Some are believing for a job. Some are believing for something in finance. Some are believing, some are believing for a car. There are different things that people are believing for. And I want to join my faith with them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for granting it. I agree with them that this need will be met. I agree with them right now. And we will not focus on how. That is up to you, how you do it. We just give you thanks for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now if you believe, just right where you are, thank him. Start thanking him right where you are. Lift your hand and thank him. Act like you already got it. Act like you got it in your hand. Rejoice the same way you would rejoice if someone handed it to you and believe that you receive. Fall asleep tonight giving him thanks. Praise God in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for those of you, full gospel, it's time for us to give to the work of God. If this message bless you. Why don't you be a blessing? And you will have the different ways that you can give. Give Lafay and whatever else they have up there for you to do. And be a blessing. God bless you. And thank you for your gifts and for tuning in. We'll see you next time by the grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen.